Next, we're going to use the plugin builder to build the shell of our plugin that we're going to be building later on. So first, let's go under plugins, plugin builder, and plugin builder. And there's the plugin builder 321. The class name, we're just going to call it save DXF. So what this plugin is going to do eventually is be able to choose from a drop down list of the current layers in your project, choose one, and then be able to save it as a DXF file. So that layer can be exported individually as a DXF file so that you could open it within a QGIS project or any other product such as AutoCAD. So I'm going to call this class name and plugin name both save DXF with an underscore. And I'll just say this DXF exports a layer to DXF. And I'll just call it save DXF, keep it consistent all the way through. We'll leave the version 01, that's fine. Minimum QGIS, yes, this was written for three. The company, I'll just say LinkedIn Learning. And well, you can contact me at contact at aerogeo.com. That's my email. And so the first page is good. So basically the class is save DXF. The plugin name is save DXF. We've got a module and description. That's great. We've got save DXF. We've got the author email address. Let's go next. This is just a about page that pops open. So we could just say this plugin allows you to choose a layer in your QGIS project and export it as a DXF file. There we go. So that's the about. Click next. We have three templates, a tool button with a dialog box, a tool button with a docking widget, or just a processing provider. So it actually does a process. We're going to use the first template, which is a tool button with a dialog box. The item will say export layer to DXF. That will be the item that you'll see in the menu. But what menu should it be under? Should it be under the plugins? You can see plugins at the top or under database or raster or vector or web. We're going to actually choose vector drop-down box under the QGIS project inside the interface. So you'll be able to get to export layer to DXF under the vector drop-down. That's where this plugin will be put when it's set up. Okay, so we know where it's going to be put under vector. We know what it's called, export layer to DXF. Let's go next. And sure, put in all the scripts and helps and all that in. We'll just leave all that together. And we'll leave the internationalization in there, help and all the unit tests. It'll create folders and files for all those things. I'm going to leave the bug tracker repository and leave that all alone. I'll leave the tags. Probably could add more tags here, but I'm just going to leave all these bug trackers, repositories, all these just default for now. And then we'll go next. And where is it going to be saved? Well, I'm just going to put it on my desktop for now. It'll be put into a folder called save DXF. And from there, we can move it to the plugins folder and install it later. But right now, I'm only interested in building this empty shell of a plugin. So let's do that. Let's hit generate. You may get this error. It says unable to compile into a QRC file. Now, what that does, it turns the Python into a QRC. Now, this is a file, the QRC keeps track of all the files and their relative paths within the project. We're going to, in the next video, manually compile this QRC, this resources QRC, because it couldn't find the compiler. We're going to manually create a batch file to make this resources QRC so that we can build our plugin. So don't worry about this command right now. We don't have all the data set up and all the compilers set up. We're going to do that in the next video, but for now, we'll hit OK. And here's the results. You'll see that the DXF was created in the save DXF. You can see that this is where you'll put the plugins eventually under your user, your app data roaming QGIS, QGIS3, profiles, default, Python, plugins. Eventually, we'll copy the save DXF to that directory when it's, when it's time to start building it and customizing it. But for now, let's leave it on the desktop where we'll be altering it. OK, so we click OK. And now if we look at our desktop, we should have a new folder called save DXF. And there it is. 
Now, the most important files in the Save DXF. The first thing is the icon. So normally, this is just a little 24 by 24 pixel file, or 23 by 24 in this case. And the default, I'm just going to open that up and show you. Whenever you build a plugin using this tool, it'll put a little plug. Now, we don't want to use that one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into our exercise files. We're going to go in creating plugins. And I'm going to copy and paste the icon, which looks like this. It's just a little DXF icon. And we're going to copy and paste that into our brand new Save DXF folder. Just paste that in there. Replace the file in there. So it'll replace that yellow icon with a customized icon that we had from our exercise files creating plugins. That's the first thing I want to do. And then I just want to point out that there's the Save DXF dialog base UI, and then there's the Save DXF PY. So these two files, the base UI and the PY, are the ones we'll be using to customize the interface later on. So we'll be using the UI and we'll be using the PY later, but we're going to have to compile the resources QRC in order to get this going. So we'll wait to the next video where we'll create a batch file to generate the QRC and then we can start customizing.